Kindle Podcast by Hiro Mafuji from KindleGuy.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts Kindle for Kindle lovers and supported by Kindle enthusiasts through Patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit KindleGuy.com for more Kindle information and how to support KindleGuy.com. Kendo Podcast Episode 15. In this episode, I would like to talk about Seme. I received a question about Seme,、uh, his fourth dan, and probably、uh, kind of it's time to just think about how we can、um, uh, perform or execute good Seme. In the you know, the, the rapid, rapidly changes the situation. You know, your of course, your opponent also t r y to make an opening so they wanna they can strike you. So, you know, we just go things change s in your mind, and then the physically you move around. And how can you maintain readiness to strike? And I, I wrote an article about this too because this is really an interesting topic. And also, I just wanted to talk about this.、Uh, so maybe、uh, I can express myself easier, more easily in this kind of, you know, when, when I talk, or I just make it more confusing. <laughs> okay.、Um, so if you, this. If you don't know what Seme is, that's probably fine.、Uh, if you don't know,、uh, probably you're not that level.、Uh, if you're third down and moving to fourth down, and fourth, if you're fourth down, you really have to start thinking about it. And Seme is really,、uh, some people say attack, and that's a physical part. Of, it is true. Seme is, semeru is, means that's a verb and it means attack. So it's not wrong. But also, we have like invisible seme, which is pressure.、Um, probably you have this experience、uh, that you don't know why, but you don't want to get in close because you feel like if you get in, Closer to your opponent, they might hit you. Of course, that's you know, after after a few strikes, you know, exchange some strikes, and you might feel like, oh man, he's good at kote, so I don't want to get in too close. That's pressure. You feel pressure because you now know your、uh, opponent is good at kote, so if you move in, he might get you. Is it Pressure, you feel stress from、uh, this fact that your opponent is good at strike,、uh, good at striking kote. So it's one type of pressure, and also the other type of pressure is if you go against e i g h t dan sensei or someone really good, and you just you know, before even you say, Yeah, or you, know, you have ki ai, you just Don't feel like you can do anything. Just go, when you take chudan or whatever you, the stance you take, and go, no, I don't think I can strike. So that's, you feel pressure from the existence of your opponent, or maybe the kamae, kamae, you know, stance, chudan, jodan, nito,、uh, whatever the stance is, you feel like, oh man, I cannot do anything. I can't see any openings. I don't think I can. You know, get in and strike. That type of kamae is can give you、uh, pressure. So that means you, if you do that, if you be able to do that, you can put pressure on your opponent, right? Theoretically.、Uh, of course, you need experience.、Uh, when you have more experience, of course, you, have, you will have more confidence because、uh, the The harder you train, of course, you, you, know, you have this、uh, feeling. I trained hard. So I, I, 
I don't think you can get me. That's a confidence, right? And if you uh, like, if you win in Shi'ai, that gives you confidence. Any type of, and however you gain the confidence, or just like uh, you tell yourself, "I'm good, I'm good." I'm right. Even if your opponent is better than you, you're telling yourself, "I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm better than him." That like psychologically uh, hypnotizes you and brings your ability up to the limitation or beyond your limitation. That happens a lot in Shi'i. So it's not impossible. Like I talked about uh, the other in the other episode, like going and becoming Super Saiyan, like Dragon Ball. Uh, so it is possible. Your internal energy uh, start taking over your body and it is, you can uh, perform, outperform regular self, if you know what I mean. So when you can do that, um, suddenly you put pressure on your opponent. So that happens. You have to experience that. You can't just, you know, because I said that, you know, if you don't believe it or if you never experienced it, you can't just believe it, right? You have to experience it. And then, you know, uh, it becomes part of you and you can gain more confidence. So do that if you, you, know, if you don't believe me. Uh, hypno, 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 hypnotize yourself. Tell yourself you're good and then you go, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, train, uh, imagine that you're good. That's a part of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, athlete does that. Uh, imagine, uh, imaginary training, not imaginary training. What is it called? I don't remember now. Uh, image training, mental training, maybe. Uh, so it's very effective. It is proof that it is effective. So you can do that. But anyway, so I want to wanted to talk about semi. So now instead of uh, talking invisible semi pressure, it is hard to do. Uh, let's talk about physical semi. The physical semi can be two things as well. Uh, actually, you know, contacting your opponent, like physically, like do something to your opponent's shinai. For example, uh, knock it down or slap it away. You want to take center and you don't like to uh, have your opponent's sword right in front of you. If, it's, if it stays right in front of you, you shouldn't be striking. So you do something about that. Okay, that's a semi, physical semi. Of course, just doing that doesn't count. So you put pressure by getting close to your opponent. But when you just get close, you take a step forward and get close doing nothing, that doesn't do anything. So when you do so, in articles, I said two steps, uh, did I say two steps in, three steps back? One, two. No, two steps in, one step back. So it, gradually you're getting closer. Getting closer means that you, you're getting, getting into your striking distance. At the same time, you're getting into your opponent's striking distance too. But you never know uh, until your opponent execute a strike. Uh, and then you realize, man, he can strike from that far uh, or you know something like that. But getting closer to your opponent means you're getting into your own distance, your own striking distance. But you don't want to get into that distance really quickly because once you get in, what you should do is you execute your strike. You don't want to stay there for a long time because then what? You never know. You, you're losing your striking distance. Uh, your opponent start attacking you. So by getting closer uh, distance physical distance you you have to go to your right go you to your left usually when you go to your right you get closer because your right foot is forward right so when you go for uh, to your right usually you get closer when you go to your left usually you can get more distance of course you uh, the smaller your steps 
are uh, the, the, uh, the little distance you can uh, like close <laughs> Uh, you can get closer or you can get a little just you know depends on how big your steps are of course it, the distance changes so you have to think about that too but with those physical movement footwork combination of footwork and also the shinai work okay uh, then you can start putting pressure on like two steps forward one step back little steps okay even like uh, uh, only just toe, like like toenails distance, just a little bit, like five millimeters or one centimeter, just getting closer. That is kind of putting pressure too. So uh, you just study that how much you should you should get into pr pr effective pressure, and of course. Uh, different people different ways so you have to study with different types of people and you study you start realizing oh this type of person I should do this this type of person I should do that so you will you have to collect data and then you start mixing or you start kind of uh, uh, make your own semi list if I do this, they do that, so I'll do this. That kind of you know strategies, you, you can come up with strategies and you can structure your uh, how you fight. So, you know, you just start collecting data. Okay, that's what you have to, that's including in semi, okay? And um, what I was gonna say, yeah, so the combination of those uh, distance and, uh, like physical contact to shinai uh, it's very that's the first step and but uh, the very very first step is knowing your own distance and you if you get into that distance you have to strike and a lot of people stay in very close distance we call it chikama and not doing anything that's not good Okay, especially uh, if you are a uh, shodan, nidan, sanda, you have to know your own distance. Uh, and the best distance is, it's when you if you strike from that distance, it's your your distance, your striking distance. But it's not your um, opponent's striking distance. So we we say in in Japanese in uh, in Japanese we say. Uh, you have to have, you have to be in the distance that's close for you to strike, but it's far for your opponent to strike. Does it, can it, it be possible? It is, it is possible. Either it's psychological or either it's really distant, you know, physical distance. Uh, but there is, there is like, I don't know how it works, but through my experience, it is possible. Okay, so know your own distance, physical distance first. And when you get into that distance, you have to be determined to strike or committed to strike. If you don't do it, you can't really do kendo because, and then like you, you have to learn commitment. If you do purely competitive kendo, it probably doesn't matter. But if you do kendo like, as the way, uh, commitment is very important. It's very important in Kindle and very important in your life. So once you're getting this distance, I have to strike, you strike. It doesn't matter the result. You never know until you execute your strike, okay? So that's first thing. So if you don't strike, you never know your, if your uh, semi was working or not, okay? so that you have to strike. Okay, that is the beginning of semi, okay? And uh, while you are doing like shinai, sh uh, doing something to your opponent's shinai, getting close, getting far, you can kind of, what the aim is, uh, make your opponent move. So when you get getting close, you know, uh, and 
probably you see a lot of people just go uh, uh, sink a little bit, like right foot, right, right knee, bend their right knee a little bit, and then like it looks like sinking a little bit to put pressure, and that's kind of actually seeing how your opponent reacts to such semi, and it's important for you to know if if I show my readiness to strike, what my opponents will do. That's important to analyze. Uh, is he going back, you know, stepping backwards, or is he trying to block it, or is he trying to strike? So you have to gather this information. Okay, that's why uh, people don't really strike after hajime as you improve, as you go advance, you don't do that because uh, you just go for it without doing anything. You never know what's waiting for you. Uh, usually it won't work. Usually they'll skew you because uh, their sword is right there, right? So uh, you're kind of going, f just committing suicide. You're just going for it without doing anything. So it sometimes works. Some most of the time it doesn't work, and important thing in semi is to see how your opponent reacts to your movements. That's very important. If I knock your I knock the shinai down, or your shin, the shinai of your opponents down, what happens? Is he going to react to it, and how does he react to it? Or uh, when you get closer. Uh, what does he is he gonna do? Is he gonna knock your shinai down, or is he gonna do makiwaza, or is he gonna back up? Uh, with those information, you have to structure what you're gonna do. So if your opponent goes backwards, are you gonna do tsuki, or are you gonna execute one hand tsuki or two hands tsuki, or you're gonna strike a uh, big man strike, or are you gonna execute kote men or you want to just step in more and then put more pressure and make them strike you and then you can uh, execute kaishi waza or not so you have to play it's like playing chess you have to read movements uh what what you, know, you have to guess what is your opponent will do so sometimes you have to give him uh, or her a bait oh, okay I'm going to strike your kote. What would you do? What's your favorite technique against kote? You have to start doing that. Otherwise, you never know uh, what type of kendo your opponent will do. As you as you as you become more experienced, the more exp uh, uh, you can kind of tell by look at look at your opponent. You can kind of tell, oh, this type of person. Uh, so he does this so probably he's going to do that you can kind of tell but you never know until you exactly uh that's hypothesis right you you have this okay hypothesis uh you guess what he's going to do or she's going to do and you have to prove it uh, with actual semi from you and okay now i'm right oh man i didn't think he can strike like that you know, so that's why uh, uh, semi is very important. It also, also it is kind of mental game. So you, by doing that, you can kind of figure out uh, uh, what you're gonna do, and you, you're gonna try to set up uh, the situation, or like uh, you just make a trap and move your opponent into the trap, right? And then when that happens, you go bam. Okay, here's it. So uh, if you have your if you have your special move, so you want to execute that move, so you have to set up uh, the situation, the environment. You so your opponent will move as you want. So that's very important, right? So that's kind of all semi, and. Uh, of course, you know, uh, a lot of people think semi 
that they are more uh, the advanced they become they think a semi is more like invisible feeling but it's mixture of everything if you have like a lot of techniques like you know kaishuaza or uh, you have you 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 can execute variety of techniques that's kind of pressure too and then your your opponent you start thinking man what what else can i do you know that's a pressure from your uh, technique and uh, if you are going against such person you have to think about how can i kill those techniques in other words um how I can stop him or stop her uh, executing the variety of strikes. So you have to get the situation that they are going to, uh, like their favorite situation. So both trying to set up your opponent so you can execute your favorite technique or uh, you can put them in, into a trap. So you have to sometimes you have to become, you have to be in the trap. You, know, you have to pretend uh, you're going to in the trap. And then when your opponent execute the technique, you go against it. You know, you go like counterattack. You do something. So you kind of um, set up a you know, different trap for your opponent. That's why it's really fun to fight like that. And that's, that's a part of semi. Okay, it's always part of semi. And when you become, if you don't do that now, and if you fight like eighth dan, uh, when you're fourth dan, fifth dan, you can't, you're losing opportunities to learn those techniques, those uh, develop your own tactics, strategies. So please do that. Pl play, play around. Enjoy the, you know, making those strategies. And that will help you to uh, fight with different types of kendo. It's like life as well. We, we don't have same type of person, same per type of people in one place, right? If you go to dojo, different types of people and different types of kendo. So you have to deal with different types of kendo. You, if you do, if you practice with people with same, you know, like the kendo you like, all right? And because he or she does kendo exactly like you, of course you, you have fun. But if you do kendo uh, uh, with someone who doesn't do kendo like you, you can't you can't have fun because you can't do your own kendo. You get frustrated, and uh, but that's the person you have to go against over and over and over until you get you feel comfortable to fight with these people. Okay, and that way you you can overcome uh, your uh, uh, that, that you know overcome the feeling of oh I don't want to do kendo with him. Well, I don't want to do kendo with her. You have to overcome that. And the, so this process is also important in your life too. If you have someone who can't, you, know, I, who you don't want to deal with, but you have to, you have to get used to it, that kind of person, right? So you have to start kind of uh, structure, uh, make, start making the strategies. And if he does this, let's do this. If he does, if you, he says this, if I should say this. So kind of, if you make, if you can kind of do Kindle like that, you can use it to your personal life as well. And it's quite similar. So please do that. And of course, um, uh, you, you know, Kindle involves a physical movements a lot. Uh, so you have to practice those techniques, right? And when you pr practice techniques, uh, just think about what type of techniques you can do. And uh, for example, if you start kendo when you be, you know, when in, in your thirties or forties, this is very hard to strike fast. So executing like. Uh, techniques that relies on your physical 
aspects such as debaname. Uh, it's not wise unless unless you're very good at setting up a trap. And when your opponent comes, you set up a trap. Okay, come come and get my man, and then boom! Before your opponent gets you, you can that that has to be done. Uh, any techniques has to be like a trap. Okay, so you have to set up a trap and then put it, put them into that situation. Uh, but of course, like I said, it depends on your level. Uh, it's hard to do like debanamen, men debanamen. So instead of learning how to do it, uh, you probably should learn. Uh, Kaishi do or something. Of course, it is you have to react to your opponent, so it's probably uh, you really have to work on some parts of uh, you have to rely on physical ability too. If you want to do Kaishi do, you have to know, uh, you have to sense when they are coming at you. Okay, uh, of course, it's hard at the beginning, but as you repeat and repeat, repeat. You will be able to do it. My father started kendo at age of fifty-five, and his men strike was like kiriotoshi. Uh, it's like you strike men and he strikes men at the same time. But I don't know how he learned it, or if I don't even know if he learned it or not. He could cut your knock your a sword away from his sword, and you, he can strike men, and uh, that was impressive. The way he strikes already becomes uh, like kiriotoshi mo motion. So he, he didn't mean to do it, but he was doing it. He didn't know he was doing it, and Eitan Sensei said, "Huh, he can do kiriotoshi like that, and you just keep doing that. And your your main strike is really good." So. You know, if you repeat the same thing over and over, over and over, you will become good at it. That's the truth, right? So do that. Work on one thing. Don't work on little things. If you can accomplish one thing, and then move on to the next one. And I'm sure one one technique will help the other technique. So you have to have those varieties. More techniques, big. You know. Gives you more confidence, so please start doing that. If you're in in your forties, or uh, if you start start kendo in your late thirties or early forties, don't worry about getting you know, getting fed in kendo. It's a limitation. Take it easy. Enjoy the strategy, and do what you can. And don't try not to. Try not to hit a target. If you do that, you 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 just can't do it. Uh, the, because if you try to hit a target, you get tense, and when you get tense, uh, your basics will be out of the window. All your your basics will be like f falling apart. So you can't strike correctly anyway. What you have to do, you just believe. In your strike, that nice and clean, you just go for it, okay? And then it will work. If you get tense or if you stop, if you hesitate, you never learn good strikes. So just when you decide, just go, okay? And uh, talk to your uh, senior students or your sensei. What can you learn, okay? And and then have the tactics. Have the strategies before you go against younger people, and it's really fun. Uh, if you sense they're coming and get you, getting closer, and you know by the pushing the sword down, their sword down, they can't hit you. Okay, so so play around like that, and they don't like it. And probably they get more. Uh, they get. Uh, they get maybe you know emotional. Like they get angry or they get upset. But that's what you want. And when they get upset or they get angry, they have no. Uh, their judgment skill will decrease. 
they, they, they start judging bad things. So if you can mentally, you, you're in control so you can enjoy more. Okay, so it's very important to know about yourself and to know what type of Kindle you are going against. And according, accordingly, you have to have strategies for that. And you can enjoy. So Seme is like all about what uh, you evoke the reactions from your opponent. And you go against it. And one thing uh, I would like to talk about Tame. Tame is very hard and it's really hard for me to do because Tame is, uh, in the article I said, uh, I mentioned it too. It's like Tame is a semi. It's a part of semi, I think. <laughs> uh, as of now, I think Tame is a part of semi, okay? And you are like, uh, kind of put your put your semi on hold. So you're going putting pressure, putting pressure. Okay, how whatever you're doing, you're going forward, and then you can see your opponent getting tense. So now you know it's working, right? Your your semi is working because your your opponent is tensed up and was stepping backwards, uh, looking puzzled. Okay. Obviously, your semi is working, but you don't strike. You know, you are in your strange uh, striking range, but you don't strike right then, right? You just wait a second, put it on a hold. This, this, uh, you know, space like blank time. It's like scary. Or oh, he's gonna he use your opponent thinks or oh, he's gonna come but you're not coming and then all of a sudden you got conf he got confused and he got pow, strike so tame is make your semi perfect almost you never know until you execute your strike so tame uh, if you're like third down or knee down don't worry about this you start thinking about Tame, like when you become four, uh, fifth down, sixth down, fourth, maybe. So if you if you can perform Tame, you're really good. It's not like it's not like stopping Seme. You don't want to stop. You just put, put in, keep putting pressure. It's like last moment of like like maximize to maximize your pressure. You hold it. And then, boom, it's, uh, as the timing is right, so your your opponent has this blank moment in his head or whatever. Uh, he stopped motion, moving. Uh, we call it itsuki. And, and then execute. So Tame creates kind of last moment. Uh, uh, Tame maximize. Your pressure that's probably the best way to put I think so yeah uh, when you if you are like fifth down you probably you can start think about it and I'm still studying it so I cannot say exactly what you should do but it's fun so please read the uh, article and just search effective semi in, or at kindleguide.com and you will probably get that Okay, I'm, I'm make sure uh, effect semi is the uh, in the title. Okay, that was thank you for listening, and I hope this help and this will help to enjoy Kendo uh, from now. Okay, thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.